Coach, uh, Big Ten season coming up this week. Uh, why don't you preview the, the preseason and look forward to the Big Ten? Sure. Uh, very happy with the preseason. Uh, lots of tough matches, and uh, and I thought the team responded really well to those challenges. And of course, now we get to the biggest challenge of all, which is uh, the Big Ten Conference. It's uh, another awesome year for us, and I mean that in in every sense of the word. Uh, so many good teams. We get to start off with Maryland and Ohio State, so um, we'll we'll see. But uh, I think our team's ready and. I'm excited with uh, for uh, what's to come here. Excuse me. How much stock in for both of you guys? How much stock or confidence do you get out of starting so well, even though you haven't really gotten into the big ten schedule yet? I think for us, it's great knowing that we've come up against some tough teams and played hard, and we have that behind us. And so, whatever the Big Ten brings, I think we have a little bit of confidence knowing that we've played those tough matches, we've gotten into trouble and gotten out of trouble. So, I definitely think it will help us. Yeah, and then in addition to that, I think just the um, the ability to play different people, different lineups, that's certainly um, a luxury. But it's also great to know that it's not up to any. One of us, you know, that that we can we can uh, compete with a lot of different lineups out there. When you look at the top three teams in the country uh, right now, ranked uh, from the Big Ten, what makes this conference so special? What is it about uh, the, the style of play or what the teams? What is it? About? Well, I think it's probably a, a combination of a lot of different factors, but certainly, um, you know, volleyball matters in this conference. You know, uh, I think without exception, the all of the programs are well attended and, and um, certainly well funded and, and it's it's great. Um, there's a lot of good volleyball in this part of the country. Uh, I think it used to be that it was probably a little more West Coast than anything else and maybe down in Texas, but it seems that now you can find great players anywhere and uh, because there are so many good teams in this conference, there seem to be a lot of good players that want to play with and against the best. So uh, there's a little bit of snowball effect there as well. Coach, uh as far as uh, I think in the preseason, you had seven home games and two on the road. Is that the kind of uh, balance you like, or would you like to play one or two more games on the road in the preseason? Uh, you know, actually, we played. We only played three. We had uh, three days here, and the rest we were away. Yeah, uh, well, three matches here, and the other six we were away. So um, that that was by design. We wanted to play. Uh, we played at Stanford, uh, down in Puerto Rico, and then uh, at North Carolina. Uh, and then obviously the Diaco Classic last weekend, which was also good because as, as much as uh, playing at home is a big advantage for us, it's, it's different playing at home. And so it was good to get that out of the way as well before this weekend. Can you talk about Paige, what she does for your team, and then Paige, sure. what it's like to play for you? <laughs> All right. We get to hug it out later. Paige. There you go. <laughs> uh, well, um, Paige is one of six seniors on this team. And, and so I just want to talk about this senior class, and we'll certainly weave Paige's storyline into that as well. But um, there's, there's so many different leaders and so much great experience with this group. Um, and certainly Paige is, a, is an integral part of that. Uh, you know, as a middle blocker, her primary responsibility is to block. Uh, we call them middle blockers, not middle hitters, you know, for a reason. And uh, she's very, very good at that skill, very disciplined. She makes good reads and makes good plays. Uh, obviously, offensively, she gets it done. And to her credit, she's developed these other parts of her game as well. She can serve and play defense and kind of do a little bit of everything, which is great. We always look to develop generalized specialists, you know, people that are good at one or two things but are the great at, at, at you know, their main parts of their job. So I think that's, that's Paige. But like I said, you know, within this group of seniors that we have, there's, there's a lot of people that are contributing in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Playing for Hugh, obviously he's been there before and been in championship teams before, and he knows what he's doing. And he just teaches us a lot, not only about the game, we know that we're getting the best coaching for like every skill set, but also like in life, he helps guide us to just become the best people we can be, which is really helpful. Coach, uh, a big article in the paper this morning, I think, on the improvement in volleyball in the state of Minnesota. Can you address how much it's improved since, just since you've been in Minnesota? I. Uh, yeah, I think there's um, there's a lot of good coaching in this area, a lot of good high school coaching, a lot of great clubs that are here, and um, you know certainly we're seeing that with the the caliber of uh, of player that's coming out of the state. Um, so yeah, I'd agree it's getting better. Yeah. Paige, when you look at the stats about your team, you know, 
top of the country in blocks. Is that, I mean, how much does that change the game when you guys can have that many blocks in a match and, and just kind of influence the game? I think it's inc it, like incredibly important. Um, across the board, our blocking is great. We have great left side blockers, great right side blockers. It just helps everything in the backcourt. Our defensive um, specialists are extremely good too, but they're always in the right spots. And it helps them knowing that there's a good, strong block set up that they can set up the defense behind it. So overall, it helps improve our game. Paige, uh, I know that both you and your sister had excellent academics coming out of school when you came in here. You've been able to, to continue that with the academic uh, all Big Ten and All-American. What about the balance you've been able to achieve between volleyball and keep your academics up? Yeah, it's um, definitely a balancing act, knowing how to get your schoolwork done considering the demands that athletics puts on you. But they do a really nice job. We have all the resources at our hands and at our fingertips. We have enough time to get our homework done, traveling. We're always working on our stuff um, when we're away. So we just seem to manage it. Um, the upperclassmen lead the younger classmen, teaching them how to kind of balance that out. And so it's been a pretty seamless um, transition from high school into college. And we seem to make it work. Paige, you the talked about the blocks. Is that kind of partially a, a defensive first mentality or is it is it just kind of what each match presents you getting being so good at, at blocking? Yeah, um, I think definitely so for blocking you obviously can stop it right away at the net. You don't have to play defense behind it and it's definitely a uh, mindset like being aggressive like defense you're trying to get the point so I think that is like a defense first like try and get it um, get the point killed before it even crosses the net before you have a chance to attack it back. Coach uh, looking forward to does Penn State look as, as strong as they've been the last number of years? Yeah they're, they're of course good but I think it's safe to say there's uh, I don't know uh, not, I'm not sure you could get, I could get away with saying there are 14 great teams in the Big Ten, but it's, it's pretty close. Um, I think one of, the, one of the great things about this conference is on, on every night that you play, you've got to bring it. You, you can't ease up at all. There's no gimmies. And um, you know, that's why I think that the level continues to get stronger and stronger, because uh, we've got this unbelievably competitive environment that we get to spend 20 matches in every year. Yes, Hugh. Yeah. Can you talk, is it too soon to talk a little bit about Alexis and how she's been progressing? No, no, this no, no, not too soon. Alexis is um, obviously performing at a, a very high level. Um, we're not surprised by that. We're just happy to see that her transition into college has been so seamless, and um, we we expect her best is yet to come. But uh, certainly, as a as a true freshman, she's carrying her weight and uh, doing a great job for us. Playing around Robin, uh, you play everybody twice, uh, that's got to be... Yeah, no, they, they changed that now because we go to 14, so we only play 20 conference matches. Yeah, so we play everyone once, and then they've got some very um, complicated, but I'm sure statistically valid algorithm that determines who plays who for the other ones. Uh, it's got something to do with the R RPI and other bits and pieces, so... It or would you prefer to play everybody twice? No, uh... I think we're doing it as as fairly as we can. You know, I don't think there's a perfect solution. Uh, obviously, we could get eliminate all preseason and just play, you know, 26 matches, and, and I'm not sure people would go for that either. You know, we need some cross-conference play at some point. Okay, what's the benefit of having such a veteran-laden roster? We're really, really well, uh, this this group and, and certainly last year's team and this year's team this year's team uh, are very uh, kind of dear to me, really, because. Uh, uh, you know the the amount of effort that they put in, the 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 growth that they've gone through, the the changes that they had to make in terms of how they went about doing this were significant, and um, there was a lot of trust uh, that they uh, they put in, in our staff to to kind of follow our lead and, and do it the way we needed to do it. Because one of the things we talk about all the time is, you know, if you want championship results, then you you need championship behaviors and. Of course, they're difficult. They're challenging. Um, if, if it were easy to win a championship, we'd all have one, and it wouldn't mean anything, you know. So, uh, when we get to this group now as seniors, having had four years with us, and um, the, the the experiences they have, especially on both sides of the coin, you know, having some some tough years and then having the the good years, I, I think that's really important, and we want that. We'll, we'll get her later. We want that legacy to to continue. You know, we want that, um, but but not the lessons to be lost. So, it's really important that they uh, 
they, I think, leave that legacy piece when they leave. But it's great to have it now because the stories they can share are really important relative to you know the, this great foundation that built and keeping uh, that going, keep allowing us to continue to build on that. I guess. That seriously, how you're passing and trying to pass that legacy along so that what you're doing now can, you know, keeps the success going? Yeah, I think it's important as like our program responsibility to make sure that the underclassmen come in knowing like how it's done and how we've changed this culture and try and keep that going. Sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I respond to both. It's never happened before. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone.